now I'm ready to ask this question about, well, what about the extremities? Like, I see this is the furthest in I can go, right there, those intercepts. I'm doing something out here, clearly. And the question is, what am I doing out there? Okay. So I'm interested in what happens as x approaches infinity. Since it's symmetrical, that will tell me what happens as x approaches negative infinity. Does that make sense? Okay, so have a look at the board, look at everything that's written on the board. Which of the things on the board is going to be most helpful to try and determine what is this behaving like as x approaches infinity? Any okay, take it. It takes some minutes, right? Yeah. Why Which one are you taking? Where? Which one? Minus root. This one? Yeah. This one? Okay, let's have a look at this guy. I think this is a great candidate. And the reason why is because when I'm trying to work out, let's give a simple example. So if I were to say, well, what's the limit as x approaches infinity of like 2 to the minus x, right? In other words, I'm trying to say, well, look, x is doing something. So what's the whole thing doing, right? So in here, if I can work out what x is doing, then I can work out what the whole thing is doing. That's good, okay? So I'm going to try and investigate the limit as x approaches infinity of 1, okay? And this is what y is, okay? So it's this. Should we like write the limit again? Um, yes, sorry. Uh, yes, yes we should. Okay, that's a bit messy, but you see what's going on. Okay, now, stare with me at this for a second, okay? Have a look at the terms you've got under here. Three x squared and negative 12. Now remember, I'm going up to infinity, right? Infinity, okay? So what do you, what does your intuition tell you will happen to this negative 12. What are you doing? Insignificant. Yeah, insignificant. He's going to become so tiny, I can pretty much ignore him. Right? Okay, so just for a second, now look at this guy. Now look at that. What does your intuition, we're going to do this rigorously in a second, but I want to, I want to guide our rigor, rigorous approach by thinking about it intuitively. What do you think is going to happen to that as x approaches infinity? You've got the square root of a square number, right? Square root of a square. So therefore, you're going to get that number, right? That's linear behavior. Does that make sense? As x approaches infinity, that thing is going to approach infinity kind of roughly at the same rate. The only thing kind of throwing us off is that root 3. Okay? And because it's multiplying through, it's not adding or subtracting. It kind of gets bigger as well. Right? Okay, let me show you how I'm going to demonstrate this algebraically because you've got some intuition now. I'm going to factorize out 3x squared from underneath the um, square root sign, like this. Plus, plus or minus, square root of. Okay. Now, if I factor out 3x squared, it seems like a weird thing to factor out because I'm going to introduce some denominators, but actually, denominators are kind of exactly what I want because denominators, limits make mincemeat of denominators, right? That's their whole thing, okay? So what happens when I take out 3x squared? 1 minus 4 of 3x squared. Now, because the 3 is cancelled with the, like this is why there's a 4 up there, okay? I'm just going to get x squared oh, down here. Okay. Yeah, you've, you've, you've done the 3 twice. Okay. okay, look at that for a second. Look carefully at it. It's brilliant, right? Watch. As I go to the next step, hmm, this is the product of two things underneath the square root. I can break them apart. No worries with breaking them apart. This is going to be plus or minus square root of 3x squared and 1 minus 4x squared. <coughs> okay, now here comes the brilliant step. This is why factorizing was so helpful for us now. If I know that this is on the denominator and it's approaching 0, what happens to this guy? It disappears, right? So that's me trying to take, I know this thing is going to disappear, that 12 that you told me was going to be insignificant, so I need to get it in a form that makes that algebraically obvious. So I divide it through by x squared, okay, or well, 3x squared. So now I'm actually going to evaluate this limit. Okay, I'm going to evaluate the limit. What happens to this whole thing, that whole square root, as x approaches infinity? One. It goes to 1, or more specifically, 1 minus 0, the square root of 1 minus 0, which of course is 1. So therefore you're just getting this guy. Plus or minus the square root of 3x squared. Right? Now, I'm, you guys know that the square root of a square number is not just the number, it's the absolute value of it. However, I've got a plus or minus hanging out the front, which kind of just 
invalidates that, that absolute value, right? So this is just going to be plus or minus the square root of 3x. That's what happens with that x squared when it breaks out. Note, please, that I've, I'm ignoring the absolute value because the plus or minus kind of overrules it. Okay? What does this mean? What were we trying to find in the first place? Yeah, good. Behavior at the extremities. We were looking for some, um, some limiting behavior. Now I know what the limiting behavior is. I've got two lines. Not one, but two. Right? Uh, root 3x, what's that going to look like? It'll be something like this, right? Passes through the origin, has that kind of, like root 3 is 1.7-ish. That's why it has that kind of slant. And minus root 3x, why is that there? What's, that, what, what's going on with that guy? Why does he even exist? Why do I have two oblique asymptotes? Because you had y equals to plus minus. Yeah, great. I've got this symmetry, right? Like as x gets bigger, I'm not just approaching 6. I'm also going to negative 6. I'm going off like that. So that's why I have this opposite facing oblique asymptote. OK, this is looking really good now. Okay. I know, I know, that minus 2 to 2, that's outside the domain. Everything else is fair game. I know I'm here, right? And I, whatever I do here has to be symmetrical that way, right? And I've got to get to these asymptotes, yeah? I can only think of one thing this is going to do. It's going to go up towards that asymptote like so, and it's going to go down to that asymptote like so. Okay, you've got that vertical symmetry happening, and because it's an even thing, I can't say even function, because it has even symmetry, it's going to do the same thing over here. It's a relation, correct. Here is our shape. And uh, yes, we know a name for this shape. This is called, I've rubbed it off. But, you know, for E is greater than 1, this shape is the hyperbola. And it's a thing of beauty. Okay? Now, we took a lot of time to develop that, okay? As you go through, we're gonna to start to recognize features and we're not obviously gonna like, this is, everything is from scratch. This is like, I've never seen this before. How on earth do I work with this thing?